interactions are what make a game world feel alive. It's one thing to move a character around, but it's when the player can affect the environment, be it opening the door, picking up an item, or triggering an event, that the game really starts to feel responsive and engaging. In this lesson, you're gonna learn how Godot handles interactions through its signal system. Signals are Godot's way of sending and receiving events, and they let different parts of your game talk to each other without being tightly connected. You'll also see how nodes like Area 3D can be used to detect when the player enters a space so that you can hook into the action like pressing E to collect an object. So let's dive in. When a player walks up to a door in a game, how does the game know that they're there? Or when they pick up a coin, how does the game know to collect it? It's all about detection or interactions. And in Godot, we use nodes like the Area 3D to sense when something enters a space so that your game world can respond, be it opening doors, triggering sounds, or collecting items. So in this tutorial, we're gonna start by creating a new interactive station where the player can collect chicken. And we're gonna use the Area 3D node to detect when the player walks into range. So in the scene panel, let's create a new scene and we're going to make this a 3D one. Right click on node 3D, go to change type and look for Area 3D. The Area 3D node acts like an invisible sensor it doesn't block movement. You would use a static body 3D for that. Instead, it's gonna detect when something enters its space. So we can see we have some errors, don't worry, we're gonna take care of that. For now, let's rename this to Chicken Station. And then we'll save it as a prop. To start, let's give the player something to look at. We'll make this a simple cylinder mesh. We'll set this as a cylinder. We'll make the height one. The top radius we'll leave actually at 0.5 and the bottom at 0.5. Next, let's address this error, which as you can see, is that we are missing the collision shape 3D. So we'll right click, add a child node, and look again for collision shape 3D. And the error is once again telling us that it's missing its shape. So we'll make this a cylinder shape. Actually, no, let's make this a box. I like boxes for areas usually. We'll make this, oops, size. Mm, let's go two by, oops, not on the Y, two by two. That should be good. So basically the area 3D node is going to handle the logic, like detecting when somebody actually enters or exits, which we'll look at shortly. But that collision shape that lives underneath it defines the physical boundaries within the space. So that area 3D will trigger if something enters the bounds of this collision shape 3D's blue box. Now, let's do a, a little bit of a refresh on layers and masks. So the easiest way to think about this is that they are radio channels. The layer is what an object broadcasts on and the mask is where it's listening. So if we change the mask to two and turn off one, it is only going to interact with objects that also live on layer two. So let's save the station. We're gonna come over to our scene and let's add it in. So you can go to props, chicken station. We're gonna drag it in, looks good. And then let's check what layer our player is actually sitting on, which is one. So let's move the player. Well, we'll leave them on one and two and say it's broadcasting on both. All right, now let's make this interactive since this is an interactions lesson. Now I have already set up input 
within this project. So if you look at input map, there's an interact, which is tied to the E button. Okay, now let's add a script. Pop over to the chicken station and we can add a script here, new script. Make sure it's set to C sharp and we'll leave it chicken station, but we're not gonna put this under props. We're gonna put this under scripting and we can make a new props folder and hit create. So once again, I'm not gonna have you watch me write a bunch of code, but let's walk through what there is here. So within ready, there's two signals, body entered and body exited. These are built into Godot. Now, Godot will automatically emit them for an area 3D whenever a physics body like our player crosses into or out of the area 3D space that we defined with that collision 3D box. Now, if you've worked with C-sharp events before, this should feel pretty familiar. In fact, Godot's signals are C-sharp events and you connect them using the plus equals and you unhook them with minus equals. Now the difference is that signals are part of Godot's engine itself. They even show up in the editor, which I'll show you in a second, and they can connect across languages. So if you're doing a project that has both C Sharp and GD script, you can use this across both. Okay, everything else should be pretty similar to what we already saw with the scripting lesson. So let's see this in action. And before we do, I realized that I made a mistake and the player is actually, I changed the mask. I meant to change the layer. Okay, so now our player is broadcasting on layers one and two and our chicken station is listening for layer two. All right, let's push play. So we should see a message pop up when the player enters the blue area. You can see it down here. And when we exit, and then if we come up and I push E, you can see that the player has interacted with the station. Perfect. Now, if you're ever curious about what signals there are, you can see a list inside of Godot. So if we go to chicken, and again, we're looking at the area 3D and you click on node, you can see a list of all of the available signals, or I like to call them events. And because area 3D is inheriting from well, effectively several nodes, you can see that it's actually getting more than just the area 3D signals. So now that our chicken station can detect the player with built-in signals, let's take this a step further. Oftentimes you're actually gonna want other parts of your game like the UI or the inventory to actually react when something happens and usually through a custom signal. So let's make one. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is add a signal. We'll put that at the top. Now in Godot, the signal attribute defines a custom event called chicken collected. Every time the player interacts, the station is going to emit that signal, just like raising a C-sharp event. And by sending along small pieces of data, like the amount collected and if we wanted, how much was even left, that signal can easily drive, say, a UI update, which may come in handy in the next lesson. Then we're going to add two new variables, uh, something to track the total chicken and the remaining chicken. And then inside ready, we'll just set the remaining chicken to whatever the total chicken is. And then the last thing we're going to add is actually replace this method here with an interact method. And basically what this is gonna do is when the player pushes E, it is going to emit a signal. And this is how you trigger a signal within Godot. So within C Sharp for events, you would do invoke, same thing. So if we come back over to Godot. Let's just add a new child, oops. Uh, let's add a new child node and we'll call it a node 3D. We'll call this game manager. And then in game manager, let's create a new script. It's probably a bad name, but that's okay. 
And again, we're going to put this in scripting and we'll just leave that here and create. Okay, so we'll replace the code like usual. And the big thing here is that within Ready, we are accessing that chicken collected event and hooking up a method which will print that it succeeded. Okay, we'll refresh the inspector and then assign chicken station. We see the players entered the area, exited, entered, and with Game Manager, the player collected one chicken. Interactions are all about communication. Area 3D nodes handle the detection of an event while well, signals let one part of your game announce that something has happened so that another part of your game can respond. For your challenge, let's create a new interactive object, a milk station. Set it up just like the chicken station, but this time the player collects milk. And while milk probably seems like a weird thing to collect, this is part of the recipe that the player will be able to craft in the next lesson, milk dipped chicken. Why milk dipped chicken? Well, that's what you get when you ask a five-year-old what you should have the player cook in your game. Either way, in the next lesson, we're going to take these ingredients and build a user interface so that the player can craft their first recipe.